Today we're gonna see how to increase your productivity with Emmet abbreviations. So here I'm inside Visual Studio Code and Emmet is already integrated, so you don't need to install any kind of extension. So if you go to extensions, Emmet, Emmet, like that, as you can see this extension is bundled with Visual Studio Code. It can be disabled but not uninstalled. Okay, so this is basically it. If you are using another text editor, of course, uh, it's not already integrated, so you can download the version for your text editor from the URL emmet.io slash download. Okay, so here I've got different things that I'm going to show you. Okay, so the first one is the HTML5. When you start writing, as you can see, you are going to see different things like HTML like that, you can go up and down with the arrow keys, okay? And you, as you can see, these are all Emmet abbreviations, okay? You can find the one you want and then hit tab. And as you can see, this one, this abbreviation, creates your document structure for you, okay? In one second, you've got the basic structure for your HTML file, okay? So here, I've got different things, as I said, that I'm going to show you. The first one is link, CSS, if you hit tab, it creates this for you, really, really useful. The same thing for the script, as you can see, really, really useful. Then, if you want to create an element, a basic element, you just need to write the basic element, div, p, whatever, li, whatever, in this case a div, and then you need to hit tab, and you've got your element. Then, if you want to create your div but with an ID, in this case my ID, you just need to write the pound sign of the ID and then the name of the ID, like that. Same thing for the class. My class, as you can see, always emit abbreviation here, like that. Then, if you want to create something with a child, for example, you can do something like this sign tells Emmet that this is going to be the child of the div, okay? In this case, as you can see, this is the child of the div. And then the plus sign means they are siblings. So they are both children of the div, but they are siblings. By the way, if you click out, it doesn't give you the Emmet abbreviation anymore. So you just need to go back once and then click P again and then hit tab. Okay, as you can see, two siblings. Then this means climb up one level. So it creates a paragraph inside the div, and then it goes up again to the level of the div and creates another div, okay? So div, paragraph, climb up, div. As you can see, this div and this div are the same level. Then multiplication. If you want to create more than one paragraph, you can do something like p times three, for example, three paragraphs. You can use this for whatever element you want. And when you use the uh, multiplication, you can use the dollar sign to sort of number the elements or number the, the attributes. For example, if I do something like ID dollar sign times three, this tells Visual Studio Code to basically start from one and then each element needs to have another number like one, two, three, etc. So in this case, ID one, ID two, ID three. If we use two dollar signs, it basically parts the number. So something like two dollar signs, like that. As you can see, zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, and not just one, two, three. Then a really good use case for the siblings and the multiplication is when you create a list of elements, like for menus and stuff like that. This will create an another list with five list elements. Really, really cool. And then when you want to create an element with some text inside, for example, a paragraph, you can do something like this is the paragraph times two. Two paragraphs with this text and this number that goes up. Okay, one, two, really, really cool. Same thing just for the, for the element, something like that. Then if you want to add the, let's copy this so I'm gonna go faster. If you want to add like an attribute, you can just do something like click here, square brackets, 
and then inside the element you want to add. Same thing for the input. Input type password. As you can see, it works. Okay, really important when you've got things with different attributes, or maybe they can have different things going on. For example, this element, you can use the column and you can see all the different things you can have, like link, for example. Okay, it adds the link. Or if you do something like link and then the click here, you've got your click here, you've got the link, and then you can just write the link really, really easy. Or for example, the input. It's got a lot of things going on, like button, checkbox, color, etc. You can just select the one you want and click on that, and you've got the basic button. Then you can group things together. Okay, so in this case, I'm grouping the div plus a paragraph times two. So I'm sort of creating this group, which is a div and a paragraph at the same level, and then times two. Okay which creates, this is one group and this is the second group, okay? So really, really important, if you have a group and then after it other elements, these elements are inserted as siblings of the first element of the group. So in this case, I've got a div, then a group, paragraph, span, my text, and then plus article, which means that this article is going to be sibling of this paragraph here, because this is the first element of this group. Okay, so let's do this. As you can see, it works as expected. Okay, last but not least, uh, there is also a feature to create random text, uh, random Lauren text. And you can do something like paragraph, create a paragraph, and then Lauren, and then tab. Okay, as you can see, it creates some text. And you can even specify the number of words, Lauren five, we create five words. Okay, so these are a few examples. You can, of course, as I said, go ahead and try to type something and then see if you've got element abbreviations. As you can see, you've got loads of element abbreviations. Link, okay, this, input, you've got all of these, okay? So just, you know, start typing something and see if you've got an element abbreviation and then get used to them because there are a lot of abbreviations, okay? And you, of course, can go to the Emmet website and you'll find even more. So let's switch to the CSS real quick. So the CSS is a bit different. Basically, while you type, you can see what a specific abbreviation does and usually the initial letters of the property are used, okay? So in this case, you can use D to create display block, okay? DF to create display flex, O to create overflow hidden. M1, you can even specify the amount, the value. So M1 would be margin one pixels, two pixels, three pixels, as you can see, really, really easy, really, really cool. Then you can specify the unit of measurement. So EM, you can do something like PX, okay? So really, really cool. Then H10 would be the height. You could do something 100, for example, okay? W100 would be the width, but with P percentage, okay? This is a little bit more complex. So BGRS, border radius, and then 10 pixels, 10 pixels. Be really easy to use. And then this could be really useful as well because it's like BGR, border right, one pixel solid black. The usual thing that you need to debug and stuff like that. You can use left, you can use whatever, B, bottom. Okay, so let's use border right. Okay, so if you're still there, that means that you really want to learn. So I'm 100% sure that you're going to enjoy this other video as well.